The sun rises on the calm of a glass-like sea. But there are subtle shifts, signs of a rough ride ahead. And conditions here in the North Atlantic can change very quickly, especially here in March, from sunny and pleasant to, well, stormy and 30-foot waves tossing the boat around in a way that makes work nearly impossible. The North Atlantic in March can see some of the most volatile weather on the planet. It can be really nasty. It's a very dynamic area with the Gulf Stream coming up to the northeast and the Labrador Current coming down to the south. And hot water and cold water just gets pretty ugly. The bridge navigates a challenging course on constant watch for icebergs. It's all about providing the, the platform to do the science. and Of course, everything depends on the weather. And that really rules all Mother Nature. On this day, the Atlantis will face 30-foot waves that toss this nearly 300-foot ship around like a mere buoy. Measures pitch and roll, the misery index. <laughs> Yikes! It gets really hairy, but it, you know every data point we get is worth it. The scientists still need to come out here every three hours to check on their experiments here in the incubators. To do so, they use a safety harness, make sure it clips, to make sure that they stay secure. And sometimes so severe that there is no science, just a magnificent view of the ocean's power, where rainbows coexist with a massive churning. There turns out to be a number of days where we can't work because we're not allowed to leave the inside of the ship. Very few people in terms of scientists come out here and study this part of the ocean in the winter. As you can imagine, a lot of the equipment used here on the ship is very expensive. So how do they keep it all in place when the waves really start rocking the ship? Well, it's a complicated web of a very simple and common household item. An intricate web of the most non-technical kind keeps sensitive equipment in place. The equipment we have, we strap it down. I mean, I own a phenomenal amount of bungee cords. I basically have a wall of bungee cords in my storage van, and we use them all. A lot of tape. And then, you know, everything is held together by zip ties in the end. As for passengers, we're on our own. So here we are being challenged by the simplest of tasks. Like walking. But we learned quickly that to be one with the sea means moving with it, against your balance instinct. We hung our camera from the ceiling to give you a full stomach-turning view of the seesaw floor we're walking on. To walk on a ship, one needs to walk bow-legged with your feet wide apart to compensate for the rolling motion of the deck. Jim Johnson has seen it all on the open waters, a scientist walk mastered by the four decades he has Just been like working this. at sea. Who walks like that on land? Uh, cowboys, when they get off their horses. It's like trying to ride a roller coaster while standing. In the galley, a delicate dance to keep food on your trays. <laughs> no matter the weather, Larry Jackson and his team serve more than 180 meals each day. Leaning forward on the countertop, every time that you grab an onion, you cut it in half, everything goes in buckets and it's piled on these rubber mats so it doesn't slide around. You can't do a nice cake with a really liquidy batter because that comes out looking like a ski slope in the oven. All splashes all over the place. In tough seas, life jackets are a must. They really are lifesavers, but not in the way you'd think. We actually use them to stuff under our bunks here as a railing. So when the ship is tilting, you don't fall out. There are few Zs fueled by anything but exhaustion. You know, when it's rough, it is not easy to sleep. Uh, if your body's working the whole time just to try to keep you in the bed, and so you wake up, you don't feel that well rested. A uh, ship is a loud place. Generators are running and alarms are going off. Initially, if you're not really tired, it's hard to sleep, but you sort of reach a point where you can just fall asleep anywhere, and we do. Incredible, and Nicole actually made this journey twice, twice. And everyone asks, do you get seasick? Her answer is a big old yes. No surprise, looking at those rolling waves. On her first trip, she said the weather turned very quickly and saltine crackers got her through. 
And how is the food? Well, Nicole says it is great, but there is one food that isn't allowed on board, bananas. That's an old superstition that dates back to the 1700s when trading ships that never returned home were said to have bananas in their cargo. Coming up, scientific surprises.